Okay, so on this video, what you're seeing right now is I'm at Michael's house, and this is really the end of the video that you're watching right now. So I'm going to do it like a Quentin Tarantino movie, <laughs> for lack of a better analogy. We're going to jump around a little bit because it's going to make more sense. We're kind of at the finished, the finished work of faith right now. What you're going to see here in a minute is you're going to see all these little steps it took to get, you know, on, on the road trip coming here. But then at the after you see this next section of the video, you're going to see all these little clips. I mean, some of them are choppy. Some of them are, you know, they're just road trip clips. But I documented everything and now everything's become abundantly clear. It's so supernatural. It's so mind boggling. I want to do it in this order. Okay, so what you're seeing right now is really the end of the video. But I'm going to do this little section and put it at the front of the video just to get you ready. So <clears throat> I'm here at Michael's house. We've got the containers out there. We're getting ready for our get together. We're working on the deck. Um, and what you're going to see in the next part of this video are all these little segments from the road trip. And y'all, you, you know, I think on some of these other videos, y'all know that the Lord had me go to uh, Tom and Jory Lamb's house. And he told me I had to go by there and lay hands on Jory Lamb and stop at the Lamb's house. That was a directive. I had to go. And it was a long way out of my way, folks. I mean, for me to go, for me to go that direction was, uh, was a really big, you know, loop from San Antonio. I ended up going through five states just to get here. So anyway, so you're looking at this this table that Michael did. And now, Michael had started on this table a long time ago, and he he had to work, really work on it and work at it. And a long time ago, he had told me about, he was, you know, the Lord had put it to him to build this table. This is made from a tree called Heavenwood. And uh, a long time ago, I said, well, if the Lord told you to do it, then you should do it. You know what? Let me get out of this light. Sorry, guys. It's just... I'm trying to find the light, right lighting while I'm doing this. So anyway, I, you know, I told him, well, if the Lord told you to do it, then, then you, you got to do it. And so, you know, he took one stab at it and, and then uh, it, it stayed here for quite a while. And then recently he, he got after it and made a few adjustments uh, using, you know, just using a different epoxy process. And so now you can see this thing. It is beautiful. It lights up, and it's got it's got glass, and it. it's got texture, and it has movement. As an artist, I'm just I just think it's it's astounding. It's really nice. So this is made with heavenwood, and this is like a clear river going through the middle of this table. It's beautiful. So anyway, this started. I don't. Mark, Mike's going to do a testimony here in just a minute. I'm going to turn this camera off. And the testimony you're going to see from Mike is going to be at the end of the video you're watching right now. And you're going to see all the little steps coming up to Grand, Jun up to Grand Junction on the road trip. And all the strange little things that the Lord had me do and, and the places he took me and the things he showed me that I documented. Okay? So I just want you to see this table and then Mike's going to come in and he's going to give a testimony to all the supernatural events surrounding this because now I know. Now I know in my heart of hearts why I had to go to the Lamb's house. Um, I, I didn't understand. He wanted me to go so far out of my way, but he said, you, you have to go to their house. Don't meet them at a restaurant in Las Vegas. Go to their house and lay hands on Jory Lamb. And, when I was there, he had me laying hands on Tom and Joy Lamb. And um, so now I understand the reason. So Mike's going to give a testimony now. And he's going to bust out some of it. Because he saves his data too. Like when these miracles happen, we document it. So he's coming in right now. There's Mike over there. And so I'm going to I'm gonna take this little clip. And I'm going to put it at the front of the video right now that y'all are watching. But then y'all are going to watch all these little steps. And then at the end of the video, you're going to see us sitting here again. And y'all's jaws are going to come unhinged. <laughs> so anyway, okay, so here we go. Let me stop. Okay, so this is the first leg of the journey. I'm in Phoenix. This is where the Lord told me to go. 
Um, the room I stayed in, the Lord told me everything significant. Look it up. The room number meant to reap harvest. I'm just saying, 270. Um, as I'm driving through here, uh, they have signs that say, Welcome to Phoenix. And it shows the Phoenix coming up. Hopefully, I'll see another one and get to uh, put it on the video. It says, Welcome to Phoenix. That's a speed limit. Anyway, but, uh, I can look one up on Google. Uh, Welcome to Phoenix. And it shows the Phoenix coming up. Just saying, it's kind of odd. I went and saw the dark Phoenix and it ended at Rue de la Paix, Street of Peace. These are just facts. I'm just accumulating facts surrounding my super bizarre life. <laughs> it's super crazy. <laughs> anyway, so I'm just document. I document everything that way. There's a, a record of it all. So because it's all impossible. So anyway, uh, yep. Leaving Phoenix, heading to Las Vegas. The Lord told me to go there and lay hands on a lady, lady named Jory Lamb that I had to go to her house to lay hands on her and read Isaiah 29. That's what I've been told to do. So I'm going to go do that step of faith. And then on my way to Grand Junction. All right, baby. God bless. Thought I would just document it. It says the covenant. It's... It's a restaurant, The Covenant. It says The Covenant 900 Kitchen. Uh, the Covenant 900 Kitchen. 900 Degree Kitchen. So, I guarantee you that'll have something with, to do with Apollyon and cooking everybody. I guarantee it. Covenant 900 Kitchen. Covenant 9. Alright, uh, anyway, just documenting it. There you can see on the street sign is the Phoenix Rising on all the streets. It shows the Phoenix Rising, so I'll try and keep it right there, right there on the street sign. It's the Phoenix Rising. So I, when it says Welcome to Phoenix, it shows the Phoenix Rising. So this is where the Lord told me to stop in on the way to Vegas. It's a natural stopover. I didn't have to go out of my way. It's, natural place to stop uh, to go to Vegas uh, you go up from San Antonio to Phoenix and then from Phoenix up to Las Vegas so anyway so you know it's interesting I'm going to be driving I'll be driving over the, the bridge in front of the Hoover Dam oddly enough the morning I left my son woke up and walked in the kitchen and he op opened the fridge and he picked up a really big glass bottle all solid glass he was half asleep. We woke up at four in the morning because he had a flight to catch. He held that glass bottle up to his chest and just dropped it on the floor in the kitchen. I mean, it was a catastrophe in the kitchen because it was real solid, thick glass, and I have concrete floors. And I have solid concrete floors, and when it when it dropped, it just shattered, and water and debris went everywhere. It was unbelievable. I was like, oh no. I think I used an expletive. <laughs> it's like, oh. Anyway, but yeah, it's kind of odd. And then on the way to where I'm going, I'm going to be going over the bridge in front of the Hoover Dam. I mean, you know, this is just what's up. These are just facts. All right. So anyway, uh, just keeping a record of it. Okay. Okay, just documenting this. So I'm going to the highway that's going to take me there is called Carefree Highway. Carefree Highway to take me. Use the right lane to take exit 223A towards Carefree Highway East. <laughs> Carefree Highway. Oh, uh, yeah. Anyway, so there we go. I'm heading to Vegas. Carefree Take Highway and then heading to Grand Junction. And we're on our way. I just, again, I want to document everything. This whole trip's been so supernatural. It's, it's like some out of an Old Testament story. In a quarter of a mile, turn left. Alright guys, God bless you. And I'll be posting this probably later today or tomorrow. Use the left two lanes to turn onto West Carefree Highway. So, I'm driving 
to Vegas right now to lay hands on Jory Lamb and as I was driving through I heard the Lord tell me pull over and photograph where you are. I'm in what's called the Joshua Forest and behind me you'll see the Joshua trees right there. The whole place is Joshua trees. So I'm going to walk up on this ridge so you guys can see. This is called the Joshua Forest. So I'm going to walk up here and get a video of it. Everywhere you look is Joshua trees. The whole thing, everywhere. It's all Joshua trees. So I'm going to get a really good... I'm going to get a really good image with the sun in the right place. So... Here we go. It's truly amazing. The whole place is Joshua trees as far as you can see. Let's see. You can see it all behind me. I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna stand to where I can get a really great image of the Joshua tree. Here we go. Whoa, this is amazing. Wow. Check it out. There we go. So there we go, the Joshua tree. This is called the Joshua tree forest. Let's see. There's a Joshua tree right behind me and another one. But it's Joshua trees as far as you can see. They're everywhere. So that's why he brought me on this route. Fascinating. <laughs> this is just amazing. All right, guys, praise God. It's time to go home, I believe. It sure looks that way. No one ever knows for sure. No one knows the hour of the day. But again, I'm doing what the Lord told me to do. Praise God, man. It's awesome. So, again, this is an entire... The entire place is all Joshua trees. It's called the Joshua Tree Forest. And what an amazing place for the Lord to take me. <laughs> this is unbelievable. What a cool, amazing road trip. So anyway, there it is. Joshua Tree Forest, and there I am, what? somewhere behind me. <laughs> All right, guys, peace and grace. I'll see you guys in Grand Junction. I thought I would just get some video of this so you guys could see just how many Joshua trees there are. This whole place is all Joshua trees. It's called the Joshua Tree Forest. So uh, I'm on my way to uh, lay hands on Jory Lamb and I stopped at this really interesting little spot here. Look at this, this vehicle right here. It's this giant machine, uh, like four wheeler, but look how it says Sin City. Uh, right up there, let's see, right there, it says, see the, the way they did the end? It's a double U, and it makes an I. The I becomes a double U, and so, I'll back up so you can see it. Yeah, so the I becomes a double U, because when you turn yourself into two different things, duplicitous, that's the sin. That's that's it. Sin city and the letter S means slaughter. Isn't that just amazing to know have their playbook? Look at that. Look at that vehicle. There's a regular truck. There's that thing. Yep. So the I becomes a W. It's just amazing. Right side up you, upside down you, angel you, demon you. That's it. Just no different than, than this. V for vengeance. Right side up, upside down. So the Lord God's going to take vengeance on that system now. That's what this is all about. Just uh, there's the V with fangs. Represents the vampiric system. And then turn it right side up. That represents a life giving system. Angel and a demon. It's amazing. All right, off to meet the lambs and see what happens. I'm going to stop at the Hoover Dam. Um, a very strange thing happened at the Hoover Dam. I mean, at my house the morning 
I got ready to leave and we got up at four in the morning. My son had to catch a flight to go meet his mom. And uh, he walked into the kitchen and he was like asleep. He, he had only gotten a couple hours of sleep along with myself. And he walked in the kitchen, he opened the refrigerator and I was looking at him going, hey T, hey T. And he just wasn't with the program at all. And he pulled out this big water jug that was filled with water, his solid glass. And I mean the thick glass. And he held it up to his chest. He got it up here and just dropped it. It was literally a catastrophe in our kitchen. I was like, what the hell? Oh my gosh. I mean, glass and water went everywhere. And with the weight and the force of that water, the weight of it hitting that concrete floor, shards of glass went everywhere. It was a, it was a catastrophe. I found it interesting that the Lord sent me on this path when I'm actually driving over the Hoover Dam. When I've shown y'all that the, the Hoover Dam is printed on the $50 bill as a catastrophe. I just find it interesting. The timing is just phenomenal. All right, just documenting everything. That's what I do. All right, all glory to God, guys. God bless. Bye-bye. Okay, so we're coming up to the Hoover Dam here. And I'm going to get a little vid here. I'm probably not going to stop. I just want to document it. You know, I told you the story about the kitchen. In the morning I left for this trip, it was so strange. Anyway, uh, that's strange. I guess I'm going over it. I would have had to uh, go to the scenic overlook. Looks like I missed it. Okay, I stand corrected. I wasn't sure if that was it or not. Boulder City, Hoover Dam. Um, I'm not going to pull over. Hopefully I'll be able to get it from where I'm going. Uh, we'll see what happens. A little tricky. I'm trying to hold a camera and do what I'm doing right now. city as per the Lord's request um, it's pretty fascinating you know just going over to someone's house the Lord told me I had to go to their house not to meet them at a restaurant they wanted to take me to lunch and the Lord said meet them at their house and um, when I saw to do as he told me go meet them at their house see where this all goes it's very fascinating Jordan Lamb has a particular type of blindness where her vision gets darker and darker and um, becomes more obscure and more obscure and it just gets darker and darker. So anyway, uh, the Lord told me to go over there and lay hands on Jordan Lamb. I'm going to go do as he told me. What's really fascinating is as I'm driving into Las Vegas, I don't really sing a lot, but as I've been driving in here, just the Holy Spirit is just... I'm opening my mouth singing hallelujah. It's fascinating. And it's just really interesting. So here we go. We're pulling into Sin City. You can see it kinda all in the background there. I'm sorry, I know it's a little bit bumpy, but I'm trying to follow, you know, highways, do videos, driving traffic, document stuff, and not crash my vehicle. Anyway, I'm doing pretty good so far. There's a bunch of Las Vegas over there. I'm not going to look over there. I'm just going to go. I'm, I guess y'all got to see it because the camera is pointing over there. I don't know. So, anyway, so I'm just going to document as I cruise, you know, through it. It's pretty wild. This is uh, it's a place I used to come occasionally. You know, it's not a place that really we go now except maybe in the skydive but to US 95 north towards Reno. 
Anyway, so here we go. I'm just again documenting it. This is just so wild. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. We're here. I'm just buzzing. Just buzzing. Ah, my old body is quivering. <laughs> Yeah, so we're heading over to the Jory Lamb's place. I've just been singing hallelujah as I'm driving into this place. It's just kind of coming out of me. It's pretty wild. It's interesting just singing the praises of God. Going into Sin City. That's just so random. I don't drive into places singing hallelujah. <laughs> but it's just kind of welling up inside of me and it just feels right coming out. That's the best way to explain it. Glory to God and all glory to the Lord God. Just, I'm excited. This is so random. It's like, okay, we're going to go over to Jory Lamb's house and the Lord said go over there and lay hands on her. And uh, just, I'm believing that the Lord's got something for Jory Lamb. You know, I don't know. She's got a type of blindness that just gets dark and darker. Maybe the Lord's going to heal her blindness. Maybe he's going to do it on the spot. Maybe he's going to do it at some point afterwards. I don't know. That's what faith is. You just, you trust in the Lord that you're not doing the work, that he's doing the work. But he'll ask you to take certain steps. So one of the steps I have to take is I have to drive over there. He told me to go to her house, not to not to go meet him in a restaurant or in public, but to go to their house. I also heard in my spirit to have her lay down and have her head hang over the edge of, you know, a sofa or bed where her head's hanging over the edge, like upside down, and to read Isaiah 29. And also 2 Corinthians, for God commanded the light to shine out of the darkness. And so anyway, um, I'm going to do what he says and just see where all this goes. Sounds interesting. All right. Just thought I'd document some more. We're, I'm almost at the exit. I'm getting close to the exit. Just went under Rainbow Boulevard. That's interesting because there's. I just went under a big street, Rainbow Boulevard. There's a Rainbow Boulevard in Grand Junction. That's where the container is, oddly enough. Let's see. I'm five miles from... Apparently my exit five miles from my destination So as I get closer once I pull up the highway, I'll go ahead and continue the documentation This is wild Okay, so I'm just like a couple miles the exit. A couple miles away take the exit on to Ann Road In three quarters of a mile turn left onto West Ham Road Turn on to Ann road. It's pretty interesting. I mean, I noticed that this whole trip has been just impossible. The room I stayed in last night, I, I documented it. You'll saw it in the video. The Lord, it was a question of which room I should stay in. There was a debate on which room I should take because of security for the vehicle and because the equipment that's in the vehicle and the room I stayed in was 270, and the Lord said, look up the meaning of 270. Turn left. It means to gather together and also to reap. That's what, so I mean, what are the odds I would, that the Lord would put me in a room and, you know, I was going to take a different room, but I heard in my spirit, you know, take the room they gave you. And um, it's just so hard to imagine that the Lord would be in that kind of control of everything, right? It's just kind of hard to wrap your brain around that. It's hard for me to wrap my brain around it. I mean, you know, I don't know. Some other people may uh, say they got it, but I've been doing this for a while and I'll, I'll tell you what I find. Just, it's so amazing the, the detail that the Lord God is in so many details. It's, it's frightening almost. It would be frightening to be on the wrong side of it. Because I've seen how the devil is in of the details. 
But think of the Lord God being over and above that in the details. Wow. That's heavy stuff. It's kind of spooky. So. Stay in the right three lanes. So anyway, so yeah, I just find it out fascinating. I, I know it's going to be interesting just driving over there. Nine miles, turn right onto North El Capitan Way. So I know it's going to be interesting just wherever I show up. And I'm, before I, you know, just keep the camera rolling into someone's personal domain, uh, I'm going to turn it off and I'll document it, maybe leaving, I'll talk to them first, but I don't want to just keep a camera rolling because I drive up to someone's house. That's just not right. So I'll document it, I'll find a way, and the stuff that's applicable, obviously, I'll bring to you guys in this next little segment. Obviously, I'm stitching together all these little segments from the trip. What about the Joshua Tree Forest? What? <laughs> That's just so crazy. I heard, I called Dave the Wave to tell Dave about that. And when Dave looked it up, there's only one other place besides, uh, Phoenix, besides Arizona and California, like uh, Death Valley, where the Joshua Tree grows. Do you know what that, where that is? Israel. <laughs> That's just like you can't even make this stuff up. You couldn't even think this stuff up. So anyway, yeah, the Joshua Tree Forest that happened to be on my route. The Lord told me to get out and document it. The only other place that that tree grows is Israel. <laughs> so, so crazy. All right, guys, uh, I'll talk, get back to this in a second. You'll see the next section. All right. Okay, so I'm documenting, you know, this arrival thing. So, you know, this is just all so strange. So, remember the name of the king is L, right? So he's having me go lay hands on a lady and the route is starting to look really interesting. I'm supposed to turn on L, Captain Way. I mean, I, I speak Spanish. I know like El Capitan means the captain. But this is a little bit different. It's L, Captain, like spelled in English. It's very odd. Like E L, and then Captain, C A P T A I N, way. L. So anyway, so Cat's gonna look up a number for me. What's what's that number mean in the Greek and the Hebrew that I just showed you, Cat? One twenty six is to inundate. To inundate? Yeah. You know what? I'm gonna pull over here real quick. Okay, hang on. It means to inundate? Yeah, that's Greek. That's Greek? What's the Hebrew? Okay, the Hebrew is mighty. Mighty. So, the number I gave you. 2626, which is yeah. the code for me to get in here, means mighty. <laughs> yeah. And and oh. and to and to in, and to inundate. I'm sorry. What were you saying, Kat? Yeah, it says from the same is chosen. From strong and mighty. And from the same as chosen. Okay, I'm gonna go real slow right here so y'all can see right there. Uh, there it is. It's E L, and then Capitan Capitan. Yeah, it's El Capitan Way. I'm sorry, it's not Captain. It's El Capitan, which is what it should be, Way. And so, anyway, that's very strange. It's just very, very odd. You know that. And then the code means mighty, and it means chosen. Uh oh. Okay, so I'm sorry. I'm still going. I got cat on one phone. I'm finding my way on the other. <laughs> Just document it. Because, you know, some of this stuff is so hard to believe. You can't even believe it. So, yeah, I'm sorry. I thought it said El Capitan. I thought that is so strange, but it's, it's correct. El Capitan, which means the captain. And the code to get in means mighty and chosen. It's just so strange. It's just, you can't think this stuff up. Anyway, so I'm almost there. I'm almost in my location. 
and uh, I'm just looking at. Yep. Hey, cat. Sorry, yeah, I lost. I lost the signal. So the yeah. the the number meant. Okay, now I'm at Bright Angel Way. <laughs> Bright Angel Way. Okay, Kat, do me a favor. Would you send me those? Can you send them to my email? The 2620. Yeah, yeah. I Listen, I got to go because I got to get directions. I'm stumped. I'll call you back. Okay. Okay, here we go. Yeah, so I just went... Past, just went past Bright Angel Way. Feet, turn left onto West Regina Avenue. Turn left onto West Regina Avenue. Okay, here we go. And in a quarter of a mile, turn left onto North Dapple Gray Road. We're almost there. So here we go. This is very interesting. <laughs> Mighty chosen. <laughs> so odd. Uh, you can't even think this stuff up. <laughs> just can't even think it up. Anyway, turn left onto North Dapple Gray Road, then turn right onto North Kingsbrook Court. Kingsbrook. Kingsbrook. So we're on Kingsbrook. That's where we're going. In 800 feet, turn right onto North Kingsbrook Court. This is fascinating. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and hold on to this. Turn right onto North Kingsbrook Court. Wow. Turn right onto Kingsbrook Court. Here we go. And then the gate code means mighty and chosen. Okay, so I just left the Lamb's house. I had an awesome time, super nice people. I was buzzing the entire time I was there. My body was actually doing the convulse thing like it did with George when Lord had me lay hands on George. Anyway, so I was buzzing so hard, and um, and I laid hands on Jory and Tom Lamb, and we had a really nice chat. We'll see where it where it all goes. The Lord's gonna do something, I guarantee it. So anyway, so check it out. I'm just showing y'all what's going on. So I left their house, and I was like, Lord, that was really interesting, cool. And I hear the Lord say, Go back and document the gate opening, and I'm like, the gate opening. And all of a sudden, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, I realized, you know, I talked about this with the uh, Tom and Joy Lamb. Their name's Lamb. So I'm going to the Lamb's house, and the gate code is 2626 to be able to open the gate. Okay, to open the gate, the word 2626 in the strong means authority and chosen so to open the gate to the lamb's house that's on Kingsbrook Court by the way Revelation there was a river the river of life they, they were able to drink freely of the river of life Kingsbrook Court all of a sudden it all made sense to me so I'm driving back I'm driving back to their to their neighborhood. The Lord told me, "Now go sit in front of it and get the gates opening up." So show the gates opening up to Kingsbrook Court to the Lamb's House. It's a gated community. That's why He wanted me to stop there, not just to lay hands on them, but as a testimony to those that go into the Lamb's House. Get it? Have to enter through the gate. And the gate code was authority and chosen. Ah, ah, that's so crazy. I'm like, what? So I've already drawn, I've already driven quite a ways away 
but the Lord told me, no, you need to go back and document. So I turned my car around and I'm driving it back just to videotape opening that, you know, that gate. So anyway, isn't that cool? That's so crazy. All right, so I'm going to do that right now. That'll be the next part of this video. So I already been to the Lamb's house, laid hands on them. And then, the, then I left and we had talked about how odd it was, just the meaning of their name, King's Court. But I didn't really put it all together until I had already driven out. And I hear the Lord say, you need to go back and videotape the gate opening. And I'm like, oh, think about the gate opening <laughs> to King's Court. Stop it. You can't even think this stuff up. So anyway, I'm going to go back and get it all documented. So, yeah, kind of cool. So I'm going back there. So the next part of this video is me going back over there and just I'm going to document that gate opening. All right. Okay, so this is me going back to the Lamb's house. And um, I'm just going back. I'm just going back to document it because this is unbelievable. So we're going into Kingsbrook estate so check it out look kingsbrook estates okay and to open the gate so look watch this to open the gate i have to press 26 26 and the gate opens so otherwise the Lord told me to come back and videotape it. So the gates are opening up, letting us into the Lamb's house. <laughs> and we're able to enter the gate and it's at Kingsbrook's Court. So just so you can see, Kingsbrook's Court. That's just unbelievable, you guys. That's just unbelievable. So yeah, so anyway, so the Lord told me to come back and document it. So I'm documenting it. That is just unbelievable. Okay. So anyway, I just had to come back. The Lord told me to go back and document the gates opening. And I'd already driven off, guys. I was like, you know, five, six, seven, eight miles down the road. And I heard the Lord say, no, go document the gates opening. That's <laughs> so crazy. Anyway, uh, so I did it. I documented it. The gates opened by in the word uh the number 2626 in the bible means authority and mighty and chosen so that that's what it all means it all means the same thing <laughs> it's so crazy <laughs> you can't even make this stuff up it's just sorry guys i'm trying to get my seatbelt. it's all just so wild it's just so crazy I mean, look, like now I'm, so yeah, so now I'm exiting, and now I'm heading to Grand Junction. Okay, so let me, let me end my route. Okay, Siri, get directions to Grand Junction, Colorado. Getting directions to Grand Junction. <laughs> you can't even think this stuff up. I'm on my way to Grand Junction. All right. Okay, you can't even think <laughs> you can't even think this stuff up. So now I'm on my way to Grand Junction after going back to videotape the gate opening <laughs> to the gated community because Kingsbrook and the Kingsbrook Court is a, a gated community and you have to be let in and the gate code means mighty and chosen <laughs> oh lord what yeah I, I i'm a little slow sometimes you know i didn't quite get it all but when i hear the lord say no you need to go back and videotape the gate of me what does that sound like to you guys like maybe the gate's about to open it's what it sounds, that's what it sounds like to me. I mean, what are the odds that the last place I went to before Grand Junction was the gate 
to the King's Court opening and the gate code was mighty authority and chosen in order to go to the Lamb's house. <laughs> uh, the foolishness of God is wiser than the wisdom of men. Boy, is that the truth. Wow, that's awesome. Okay, guys, God bless you. So I thought I'd do a little video. Just some, I've left the Lamb's place. By the way, that was so, that was so wild. That was just, it was so unbelievable to see the location and the meaning of it all and the spiritual significance. <laughs> it's so crazy. Anyway, I left their house and I'm heading towards Colorado, leaving Nevada. I mean, yeah, leaving Las Vegas. And so anyway, just going in the mountains and going through Utah right now, I thought I'd show you guys a little scenery. This is all backed up. Um, what a road, what a, what a massively cool road trip. How the spiritual significance has been off the chain. So anyway, I just want to show you guys a little bit of what I get to see going into it. Uh, just pretty wild, you know, pretty intense scenery. Just pretty cool. Just thought I'd let you guys see it. Anyway, just again, checking in. I like to do little check-ins over the road. Anyway, God bless Jory and Tom Lamb, very nice people. Uh, the Holy Spirit was just so present during the meeting. We'll see what happens there, but I'll tell you what, their location was so significant and the spiritual meaning behind going there. Now I know why the Lord told me you have to go there. And um, I know he's gonna do something for the lambs as well. I could feel the Holy Spirit. You never know how or when, but yeah, anyway. All right, guys, God bless. I'm going to log it out now. Okay, so I made it. I'm here with Michael. Michael, say hi. Hello, family. Hey, everybody. Uh, so, yeah, we're like knocking out the deck. It's really interesting. It's This is uh, this is the work, a lo labor of love. I mean, all the contractors that were supposed to do this bailed out. It's the craziest thing. So it's Michael and Johnny. And you know he had a little help obviously doing some of this, but uh, we're finishing it off and uh, We're getting it ready for the get-together. There we are. Yay mm -hmm. Woo And so uh, anything you want to say to anybody? Stay the course finish your race. That's it man And he that began a good work on you and you will finish it until the day of his arrival and you know I want to be very very specific about what I'm gonna say right here what we're doing is this work of faith and y'all have seen all these supernatural occurrences that have led to this. We don't know what's going to happen. Nobody knows, but that's what faith is. That's exactly what faith is. You don't know for sure, but you believe. So because I believe I got a big red X on the parachute because Michael believed he allowed me to pour these giant concrete footings in his freaking yard. Tell him what you plan on putting here. A pool. Yeah. So I'm gonna dig out my own pool. So he was going to do his own pull. Let me go over here. He was going to do his own pull in here. And at the time I sent the first container, Michael reached out and said, "Hey, you, you know, if you have a, if you need a place to put the container, you can put it here. But tell him where you meant." Um, out in the front <laughs> where my vehicle was, I was just actually planning. Hey, Johnny, you can put it here if you need it, um, a free place to store it. Yeah. And uh, then the Lord told me to build a shin garden, and I'm like, what? So out in front of Michael's house, this is really wild stuff. There was a bush and uh, two bushes. There were two bushes that they were poisonous, right? Yep. I two, was definitely allergic to, or I broke out into a rash. Two poisonous bushes, and and he heard the Lord tell him like, dig up the bushes. Yep. And put a shin garden in. Just just yeah. give a testimony. So I was like, what is a shin garden? Like I had no idea. And uh, so I took out these two bushes. They formed a vesica, and I never even realized that. That's what it was, and I was allergic to it. I broke out into these hives, tearing it out, and I didn't want to do it. And uh, so then I hear the Lord tell me to build a shin garden. And I'm like, what is a shin garden? What is a shin garden? <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, I want it out of stone. And I started to panic because I don't have money. And I'm like, I can't go buy stones, you know. And uh, he says, start digging. And I started digging into that place where the bushes were, and I found every stone. You know what? Let's, let's walk out right. there. Let's let's do. We're gonna do a testimony because. 
know, everything, the, the thing about being a Christian is we have these testimonies of what Jesus has done and how he did it. And it's so crazy that by the world standards, it's like, y'all are nuts. And, and I can understand that. If I was yep. worldly and I didn't have the Holy Spirit, I'd be going like, these guys are freaking, should be on Bidding Hill. Yeah, yeah, so, I totally get it too. Yeah, so anyway, so here we go. So, so Michael's, you know, he, he got, he was told to dig up these poisonous oh, bushes. He was told to dig up these poisonous bushes and put a shin garden here. Well, let me show you what's on this other container right here. You see what's down on those things? That thing, two, two shin symbols. That was an afterthought, actually, after Michael had done the shin garden. But here's the thing. These giant concrete footings that are in his yard, just to stay on track a little bit. See, I, Michael was going to let me put this container in his driveway. Well, I didn't know that. He never said, you can put it in my driveway. I called him up and I said, hey, Michael, look, uh, the Lord told me I need to put it on these four by four by four concrete footings. Let me show you how big that is so you get an idea. You see this thing? You see this concrete footing right here? That's only part of it showing. Let me show you this thing. Look how giant that's four feet by four feet by four feet. That is insanely big. I've done a lot of construction. You could build a house on this thing. And I was like, the Lord, that's too big. And he told me it has to be that. And so then I called Michael and I said, hey, can I do these in your yard? Now imagine you're him and you're, you and your wife are going to do a swimming pool. Yeah. <laughs> and then some guy calls you up and says, hey. We didn't uh, even, we've never met at this point. We never met. We'd only talked on the phone maybe three or four times a yeah. year. And, uh, and I tell him, yeah, can I put these four by four by four giant concrete footings in your yard? The Lord told me. <laughs> and then you tell him the reason yeah. you did it. And as soon as Johnny said it, I started buzzing and I got put into remembrance of um, I had to drive up to North Dakota and on, I had to take it to this detour that I wasn't expecting. And I hear the Lord tell me, send Johnny $444. And I'm like, all right, if I have to send $444, you're going to confirm it. And he did. He had me go on this little sidetrack and then I got to this traffic and this uh, church, there was a church and it had the, one of those electronic signs and it was flashing four, 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 <laughs> four. It was broken. <laughs> so, so I tell you that. So on that, yeah. he sends me $444 to the ministry like years and yeah. years ago. And I didn't even really remember it. So then the Lord tells me, yeah, these concrete footings have to be four by four. Tell Michael. And I'm like, hey, Michael. And so he's like. That makes sense. Yeah, okay. And so all of a sudden, no swimming pool, four by four by giant concrete blocks yeah. in his yard. The Lord told me to do it. And he's like, well, obviously because of the previous testimony yep. he had. So that's just how those concrete footings got here. And then before the Lord showed me how to understand how to read the enemy's language and how they use the how they use the Strong's Concordance numbers to delineate uh, words from the Bible. Well, Michael looked up the meaning of 444. So the biblical is, meaning. The biblical meaning of 444, which is the foundation of the container that represents the bride of Christ, the, that foundation, 444, is, means perfect love. I mean, think about that. Perfect love coming together with the judgment seat of Christ. Now, think about this. So, the, both containers share one of the footings right there. They both share that footing. So, the judgment seat of Christ shares the foundation of perfect love. Then he told me, now the footings that we're putting on this side, he told me they had to be 344. Four. And I'm thinking, well, that'll save them some digging and some concrete. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, so I do three. And he says, look it up in the Strong's. You know what 344 four means? I will return. Ah! I mean, you just can't even think this stuff up. So, again, do I know that anything's going to happen when all this goes down? No. I don't know anything for sure, but on faith. We've done all this. Amen. Let's go look at the shin garden. All right. So we're going to go look at the shin garden. Going to pause it. Okay, so here we go. So look behind me. You see like what looks like a big W. Well, you know the enemy likes the W to make cuts. Sorry about that, guys. There's a lot of sun. So that's a big shin symbol. And so now I'm stepping on it. And so then behind me is the hoopa. That's like a wedding hoopa, guys. And that's the same symbol that's on my house, the head symbol. And there's three head symbols on my house in San Antonio. Het, het, het is 888, which means the salvation of Christ, yep. Jesus Christ. And so now he's got a shin symbol in his garden, a rock garden. Think about this. 
we're all on the rock. <laughs> it's insane. Yeah. And then he put these vines here. You want to talk about the vine? Well, you want to go over so there? All these, if you see some of these stones, are huge. And these were all buried. These were where the bushes were. And everything was underneath the dirt here. And I had to dig, dig, dig and pull each stone out by hand. So can you imagine he dug up poisonous bushes that were here that were in a vesica, Pisces? Just think about that. He dug up poisonous bushes that were in a vesica. And then the Lord told him to dig. And he dug up all these stones, these big ones were standing on, and made a giant shin symbol. And that's what's on the Bride of Christ, too. Like the two coming together is one. You can't even think this stuff up. <laughs> and, then, and then the vines. And so then I get told to go um, build a hoopa. And again, I asked him, like, Lord, please confirm it that I heard correctly. And he proved it over and over. Yep. And so I went and bought the wood. And the wood, the price, um, the receipt, when you looked it up in the Strongs, meant the Bride of Christ. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and then then he told him to just go to the store. And I remember this phone call. He, he was freaking out. He called me. I was like, Johnny, Lord, tell me i got to go in and pick out some red color and put it on there. I'm just supposed to reach in and pick it out. I'm like, well, okay, I mean, why are you freaking out? He's like, oh, like oh, how do I know which color red? I'm like, dude, who cares? Just go pick one. And so he goes and picks it out. What was the color? Well, the Lord said, you'll know it by its name. And it was the first one that uh, um, I had. And it was rapture red. So he reached in and he picked out of, you know, all the paint samples at, at, at Home Depot. He reached out and he pulls one out. And the first one he pulls out says, Rapture Red. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's on that thing. Ah! Yeah. So, do we know something's going to happen? No. Do we have kind of a hint e idea? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we think so. I hope so. Anyway, we're like children, aren't we? The Bible, the Bible says, unless you become as little children, you cannot enter the kingdom. Exactly. Michael and I have that going for us. <laughs> Later. <laughs> okay, so now y'all already saw the beginning and, and you guys got to see all those crazy steps coming up here and stopping at the Lam Jory Land Tom Lamb's house. Guys, did you know the name Thomas means twin? I want you to stop and think about this for a sec because the Lord told me weeks and weeks ago that I had to go by the Lamb's house and lay hands on Jory Lamb. Well, when I got there, uh, and, and met them, very nice folks. They told me, well, yeah, Tom, did you know Thomas, his name means twin? Guys, I, I'm really good with knowing my names and knowing my stuff. And you know what? I didn't know that. I just, in my mind, I always thought doubting Thomas and you know what I mean? So I didn't ever really equate the word twin with Thomas, even in the Bible. I know it says, you know, twins, but it never, it never really rang a bell. And I know why, because the Lord never let it ring a bell with me. He wanted to surprise me. So I'm the guy that the Lord used to bust the, the twin system, good and evil, right side up, upside down, light and dark. So isn't it fitting that the last stop on the journey out to Michael's house, I have to go through a gate that opens up. You know what, I'm gonna sit right here. Hopefully this is framed up. Can you see if that's framed up? Just stand up and tell me. Yeah. Yeah, more or less. I can see you. You yeah. want me to hold it? Yeah, you hold it. Okay. Yeah, that'd be better. Okay, so yeah, so on the way out, y'all just saw all the little video clips. Um, isn't it crazy that I went by these people's house, Tom and Jory Lamb, and to have the gate open, just think of the terms of heaven, to have the gate open to go into Kings Brook. <laughs> Can you see the table? Yeah. Kings Brook court the gate code was 2626 and i heard the lord say look it up you know and i looked at him and, and i called cat it means mighty and it means chosen and i you know and it didn't really register i'm just being honest i was like wow that's wild that's crazy so i you know i, I press the code i go in i meet the lambs very nice folks i lay hands on them we have a nice discussion and and then i'm on my way and i leave and then i'm driving out of las vegas and i hear the lord say you need to go back Day. I'm already on this horrific road trip. I'm like, you know, serious road trip. And I'm like, go back. What? You need to go back and videotape the gate opening. And I'm like, the gate opening. You need to videotape the gate opening with the gate code going into Kingsbrook 
court because guys this is revelation 22 the the river of living water and and, and i'm like what go back and videotape the gate opening mighty chosen and entering into kingsbrook court going to the lamb's house gives you access to the lamb's house and thomas means twin think about that because we're in this twin system like this. Now we're like this. There's two twin containers outside, guys. One's the bride. One's the judgment seat of Christ like the groom. They're on a base that's 444 for the bride, which is perfect love. And the base that, in, in the other one shares the base, the, the judgment seat shares that base of perfect love. But it's also got its own base, which is 344. And the Lord said, look it up, and it means I will return. Okay, just stop and think about all that, just for a second, <laughs> as coincidences. Those are just facts. Okay, now, I got all that out, so now Mike is going to blow your mind, <laughs> because he kept a bunch of data, and then, I just want you all to see this. Look how cool this is. Look at this table. Look how, that, look how this thing moves. And look at the tables all set. Just, it's beautiful. Okay, so now, now we're going to talk about, I'm going to sit over here a little bit, give him a little room. Give him a little, I want to frame it up really nice, guys. Okay. Sorry. Okay, so. All right, so one night I'm getting ready to go to bed, and I hear the Lord, I want you to study. So I come out, sit in my chair, and I'm sitting there reading, and I'm reading in Daniel. And uh, as I'm reading, I hear the Lord tell me, Michael, I want you to build a table. And I start freaking out. <laughs> I'm not a carpenter. Um, hang on, let me jump in. Okay. No, he's not. <laughs> and so I'm like really panicking. And uh, you know, and so he starts telling me to look up uh different types of tables and that the table had to have a river run through it. And my whole entire idea of this process was I was gonna go to Home Depot, get two by twelves and kinda like knock them <laughs> together and be done. Yeah. Like, that's all I was thinking. And so I tried to go to sleep and he would not let me sleep. And so he said, I want you to look up a live edge. And I'm like, what is a live edge? <laughs> I have no clue. And so what a live edge is, is like a, a sliver of a whole entire side of a tree with the edge of the bark on the side. I'm going to show him that real quick. Oops. Okay. Let me show you what that looks like. That edge right there all the way down that's the live that's called the live edge because it was the outside bark of the tree okay go go ahead yeah. and so i started looking up uh i was like, i can't sleep i started looking up the lumber yards and they have some of them have web pages where you can look up prices and some of these things were like two thousand dollars <laughs> and now i'm really panicking <laughs> and uh and so i finally um he told me to go to yoder lumber and well, wait, you looked on... Well, I typed into Google yeah. for lumber yards. Because he thought it was local. Yeah, and so um, the very first search, was I typed in Grand Junction Lumber Yards, mm -hmm. and the very first search was uh, Yoder Lumber, and I heard in my spirit to go right there and click on it, so I went and clicked on it. And as I started going through a lot of their trees, I'm like, I don't know which one to get. I have no idea what to do. And the Lord, um, as I got to this tree that was called the tree of heaven, I started <laughs> buzzing like crazy. And uh, awesome. he told me to um, get That's the one. Yeah, he told me to get two of them. Um, so two different slabs, and I got the two different slabs. And, uh, but it was all the way up in Ohio. And so the next morning, I started looking around all around here, even in Utah, places I could drive to. To try to save money on the the shipping costs, and I can expensive. confirm that because he called me and we <laughs> prayed about it. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Anyway, keep going. And so, I can't find anything. No one in the country is selling Tree of Heaven except for this one place in Yoder, or uh, or in Ohio of the Yoder Lumber Yard, <laughs> and they had three slabs. And the Lord told me to get two of them. On one of them, it had a stamp on it. Right. And when you when you get the stamp, just walk it over and put it right in okay. front of the camera. 
So, because we want you to see this, we document all this. Look how beautiful this table is, you guys. That's just stunning. Okay, so let's see. So there's a stamp, it says- 514. 514 is and, one. And then the other one. Okay, and then the other one says 516. 516. Okay, so, but, but hang on. Be, okay. okay, go sit back over there. Don't forget this part of the testimony, but, you you thought Yoder you thought first of all that the lumber yard was local, but then you saw the area code and you realized it wasn't local. Yep. Where is the new where is Yoder lumber? And so I ordered the wood. I ordered the two slabs and they were split down the middle. Each one was completely destroyed. And uh, so he told me to get those two because they were from But where's pennies. Yoder lumber? And then once I bought them once that occurred, the Lord told me to look up the name Yoder and look at the city it comes from. And I'm like, oh, okay. And I, I'm sorry, going, maybe I'm over here. Okay, things. wait, can I get everybody ready? <laughs> Brace yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> so the city where the lumber yard is, is New Philadelphia. <laughs> Does that ring a bell like what's I'm on fuzzy. that container out there? Revelation 3.10. There's a letter to the church of the angel of Philadelphia, the new Jerusalem. I told everybody that's what that container represents, is the new Jerusalem, the bride of Christ. Revelation 21 says, and I, I said, well, Revelation 10, uh, 3 says, and I will write upon you the name of the city of my God, which is the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven. And then in Revelation 21, you find out, John says, and I saw the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven adorned as a bride. Okay, so these are all these coincidences going on with all this stuff. So now that the heaven, the tree of heaven table came from Yoder, which is in New Philadelphia, <laughs> which means brotherly love. And uh, it's Yoder and it's 514 and 516 and then continue my and so each one of those, when you look them up in scriptures, especially in Revelations, um, it means that the saints have been found worthy and that um, we deserve praise once we go up home, that we're going to receive praise because uh, that we were found worthy. And so each one of the slabs represent. So the number 516 has a meaning in the, in the Bible Correct. and the my, number 514 has a biblical meaning. Why don't you read them up your phone? Yeah, so he saved them. <laughs> I, I, I can attest to that because he went and got them and I was like, oh my gosh, I remember this. So now it's becoming just unbelievably pertinent. So anyway, so. Uh, yep, so 514 means suitable. Do reward. So the reward of us getting reconciled to the Lord. We right. go home. And reward for service. And we have the supper with the lamb. The wedding supper of the Lamb, yeah. And 516 means worthy. Yeah, so those are, just happens to be one half of the slab was 516, the other half was 514, and, <laughs> and he just, yeah, and he just put it right up there. Okay, so, yeah, go ahead. Yoder Lumber in New Philadelphia, see? Isn't it odd that, first of all, isn't it odd that someone would document all these things? How crazy is it that it all is pertinent and it's all interwoven together with everything that's going on? Do you understand how insanely impossible all this is? And then this, I just want you all to know, this is Revelation 22, I believe for verse 15. And at the end of this, I'm gonna re read Revelation 22 because that's the reason the Lord took me to the Lamb's house King's Brook Court to enter the gates. And it tells you in Revelation uh, 22, and those that are allowed to enter, and then there's a, those that are not, not allowed to enter, are the dogs and the whoremongers and the liars, everyone that loveth and liveth and lies, sorcerers. And uh, so anyway, here we go. And so I ordered the wood, and it's on its way and I hear the Lord tell me Michael the weight is very important document it and so the weight 
Like, I remember this too. I remember this. I, you know, and because so I was like, shit. what? I was like, so the weight is 520 pounds. Yep. And it means to take off. <laughs> to take away. To take off and to take away. Maybe, you know. No one's saying anything's for sure, but that's what faith is. <laughs> but so every significant aspect of this table represents the bride. Um, even the glass that the Lord had me put in here, I had to order 40 pounds of glass, um, which uh, Greek 40 means saints. And also 40 is a number. I, I'm just going to turn this real quick. 40 is a number of new beginnings. I got saved when I turned 40. Um, Moses, uh, he was on the back side of the desert for 40 years. Um, Jesus fasted for 40 days. Um, you know, the number 40, uh, uh, the flood, 40 days and 40 nights. Um, 40 is a number of renewal and regeneration as well. And what's, I mean, you know, you, you couldn't even think all this stuff up. Yet here it is happening. So, yeah, anyway. So a couple of the other significant aspects of this table is Hebrew 23, which means father of gathering. So our father is gathering the church. And 622 um, is also to receive the gathering as the Lord will receive us and would become. Yeah, go ahead. No, no, keep going. Okay, yeah, to receive. No, I'm just all of a sudden in my spirit, I'm hearing, <laughs> look up 418. And I mean, I'm just doing that on faith, guys. I just in my spirit. I'm hearing look up 418, so Michael's gonna do it live. And I'm like, I hope it's good. I don't know what it is, I have no clue. I'm like, that was 418? 418, yeah. I have no, no idea. He's laughing, so. <laughs> impossible. What? Impossible. It means impossible? Yep. That's amazing. Yeah. There you go. All right. It is impossible. It's only used one time in scripture. It is impossible, but with the Lord, all things. Oh my God. Time out. Hold the phone. Quick, quick thing. <laughs> so, yeah. 418. And then it's only used one time in Luke chapter see? 17. Yeah. Okay, wait, it means what's impossible with men is possible with God. Let me go double check that real quick. 17. Boy, I got to, y'all are not going to believe the testimony on that now. I was like, oh gosh. Yeah, so anyway, it just, it keeps going and it keeps happening. Oh, they said he onto the disciples. It is impossible, but that offenses will come. But woe unto him through whom they come. Oh, wow. So that's the impossible. I'm going to get do a little breakdown of that scripture before I go to bed tonight because I'm sure it's extremely pertinent. Yeah, because all of this is impossible. None of this, it, none of this is possible. But here we are doing it all. Um, okay, any more stuff on the table that we should document? Um, let's see here. Without going into great detail. Well, he's doing that. I'm going to do a little, just let you guys look at this thing, and I'm going to open up Revelation 22 so we can read it. Um, so here we go. Let's see. And you guys, you guys can just hang out with us for a minute. Okay. Revelation, wow, that's interesting. So, okay, here we go. So, Revelation 2, 22, I'm sorry, here we go. And, and I'm trying to get the light on it. You need to read it? And he showed me a pure river of water, of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and from the Lamb. Okay, so... This is Revelation 22, and just think about this table, and then just think about going to see the lambs at Kingsbrook Court. Kingsbrook, like a brook, like a stream. Kingsbrook 
lake-like stream, King's Brook Court, and to enter mighty and chosen and the Lamb's house. And Thomas means twin. I mean, my head's, my brain's short-circuiting. You can't even think this stuff up. Okay. So one last thing, um, the total cost of everything, the Lord had me save all the receipts, um, means a sacrifice, a gift. <laughs> <laughs> the glass in here, um, the Lord had me uh, look that up, and he said, you'll know it by its name, and it's called Starfire Glass. Angel Fire Glass. And that is crazy. Anyway, so there's the testimony just on the table, just on the trip out. <laughs> and uh, well, there's still more. There's still good. much more. Because, yeah, there's a lot more. But, I mean, you know, we don't have all day just to sit here and tell you all the crazy stuff that happens. But, guys, we have a very interesting event coming up. And we don't know what's going to happen. We have no idea. I'm hoping, like, I, I'm hoping it's my last day on earth, but it may not be. I mean, who knows? No. But that's what faith is. Faith is just believing. Amen. All right, guys. And this is, we'll see you at the party. <laughs> okay. All right, there you go. Say bye. Bye, family. Bye, guys. Isn't that pretty? Isn't that beautiful?